All right. I'm actually going to go down there. Right? Okay. At this time, we'll call the uh, full transportation committee to uh, order. Um, being is that I have the bill that's in the committee today, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, vice chairman of the committee, the chairman of our caucus, Ms. Donna Sheldon, to let her run the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and ladies and gentlemen of the committee. Just to kind of give you a little brief history of what this bill is trying to address, I had a uh, one of my cities call me, the attorney, and said that they've had a task force that's been kind of looking at golf cart and ordinances throughout the state of Georgia, trying to figure out how to be kind of consistent. And what they came across was the fact that they were concerned that there probably wasn't a single city in the state, other than maybe Peachtree City, and I don't even know if Peachtree City actually, would comply with the law today. Because basically what the law says is that you, at any intersection where a golf cart may cross, you're supposed to have a posted sign. In my hometown of Osceola, which is very small, uh, Representative Reinders, Chairman Reinders, understands that. Um, we have two red lights. But at the end of the day, we only have, I know, two signs there that I have seen, uh, and we have a local golf cart ordinance there. So what we're seeking to do with this is really just, one, to try to help protect cities or, and I don't know if there's any counties in the state that actually have a golf cart ordinance, but I know a lot of cities do. But try to, one, protect the cities from possibly from a liability standpoint, but also try to warn people that are that may be coming into the city that or the county that, that aren't from there, that's out of town, to let them know that this is a community that does allow golf carts within their city so that they could be aware and be more cautious uh, for them when they are approaching uh, the area. So it basically just says that the sign shall be erected at the entrance to the cities. In other words, it, wherever you have a city limit sign, you put up a sign that says that, that beware, this is a golf cart community or there's a golf cart ordinance there. And most of you know them. You've probably seen them. It's got the picture with the golf carts and all of them. So really it's to help, one, with the citizens for safety standpoint, but also help the, the cities as well. And um, Madam Chairwoman, I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions that, that any of the members might have um, at this time. Um, thank you, Representative Roberts. And we have <laughs> Chairman Reinders. Yes. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this. Just a couple, I know that when we do street renamings within this committee, we have a an issue in regards to the cost of that. These signs and, and this particular piece of legislation will be paid for by who? The cities. The cities will be charged with erecting them. Then does it say that anywhere? No, sir. All right. It does not. Would you accept a friendly amendment to that? To sure. the governing authority? Sure. Secondly, um, upon doing that or not doing that, um, I, I'm just wondering about, and I don't know if anybody hears from the Municipal Association or not, but I'm wondering if there could potentially be a liability issue. And, and what I'm thinking of, supposing for the moment that we were to pass this upon signature of the governor or July 1st or whatever, and they don't erect until September, hypothetically, is there a potential liability issue? Because I know in DOT you've got to meet certain engineering standards or that could leave us in a potentially liable position. Good question. Um, I have showed this piece of legislation to both GMA and ACCG and both of them says that have said that they don't have an issue with it that they support it and as far as the the liability standpoint I don't think it would change anything currently I mean the current I I think today they're they've got a liability issue if something were to happen and so if they don't go in and erect these signs to help to solve that problem I think that, that it would be the same as it would be today May I continue? Sure. Do, do you think, Mr. Chairman, 
just for the little wiggle room. And, of course, they could know it's coming, and, and that can answer, especially if we go ahead and get this thing passed. And at July 1st, that would give them enough leeway. But I'm wondering if, if that's not the case, if it's, um, you know, if there's something in there that might say you have 30 days to erect. or, And, again, just thinking outside the box here. Because uh, if they don't have it, if they don't have it immediately the day what the day of, I, I don't know if there's a liability of issue or not. If it's signed July one, it's just, something happens July two, and the sign isn't up, are they in trouble? Well, I would just say that that you know, as, as with a lot of things we've passed, you know, Chairman, we we put an effective date on it, and I think that the liability could be there for a lot of different pieces of legislation we have. Um, I think that currently they're not that there there could be a liability issue that's out there, so. I, I don't know how you fix that, but I, I'm just I, thinking. Yeah, I, I I don't either. I think at the end of the day that we'd probably be better to just kind of leave it like okay. it is instead of trying to go in and try to say. And that's something we may think about by the time it gets to the Senate. Sure, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, most of, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, most of what I had to ask was answered, except uh, this would only apply to municipalities that has an ordinance to this absolutely yeah this only applies to those governments whether it be city or county and there again I don't know why a, a county would pass it but th there may be a situation out there that I'm not aware of but only if they pass that ordinance would this apply to them okay. that's it okay, thank you. representative Epps okay thank you madam chair Mr. chairman on line 14 you said that it intersects state highway system that it intersects is that are that state routes or yes. county roads or any any thoroughfare? Yeah, it. If you read it, it says the state highway system at the point on the highway which intersects the corporate limits of the municipal boundaries of the counties. So anywhere where you got state highways that's coming into that, that intersects coming into a city or or county, that's where you'd have that sign. But Same. it could apply to local. Excuse me, apply to local road. Yes. Sir. Thank you. Are there any other, any other questions? Thank you, Chairman Robert. Thank you, ma'am. Great job. I think we have a couple of representative Chairman Rob Rinders. Did you have a friendly amendment? Friendly, friendly amendment? Yes. Um, I would ask for a favorable consideration of the amendment on line 17 and at the end of public streets. Get your picture. All costs associated with such shines <laughs> shall be funded totally, such <laughs> signs shall be funded totally by the governing authority. I was thinking on line 17, after, after public streets, after streets. Okay. You got the language. Costs associated with such signs shall be funded totally by the governing authority. Did you hear that? I, th you th I think that would cover it. Okay. I ask for your favorable consideration of that friendly amendment. Um, who's number nine? Number nine. No, okay. Good question. Representative Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Daddy. I, I, just, <laughs> I just need some clarification. We Now, this, this applies uh, to every highway, which comprises a part of the state highway system. And wherever it intersects with the corporate limits of the municipality, that's what we're talking about. Sure. I, 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 I like the bill. The bill is fine. But, uh, Chairman Wright, yes. I don't like the part that it's a state mandate, and we're making the city pay for it. And it's clearly state jurisdiction, and we wouldn't be messing with it. Why are we passing on this cost to a municipality when it's, 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 it's designed for state highways? I think we do the same thing with um, the renaming, as we mentioned. But you know, that's certainly the will of the committee, and I would respect mm -hmm. your wisdom. I would just stop for, to follow up. It was just that um, I, I, I just could, we're just passing things on here. I don't think. If I was a mayor, I wouldn't be happy about having to pay for something that the state 
It's a state highway. I just, I just, I like it as it was. And if we go, if we mandate anything, we need to tell the state to have it done in X number of days, since we're the ones putting it up. That's that's all. It's mine. Um, a friendly amendment to your friendly amendment. <laughs> My amendment says let's go back to the original language and say the state, and and add that that, that the state shall be responsible for erecting these signs. Um, Representative Williams, yes. it, it, from my standpoint, and I'm fine at the pleasure of the committee with, with Chairman Reiner's amendment or whatever the committee chooses to do, but I would say currently they are erecting signs. The cities are erecting and paying for signs and in the communities. The, the only issue now is that they're not erecting, erecting the signs where they're supposed to be or actually probably as many as they should be. So they're already currently paying for the signs that's being erected. But if when, when we're talking about these specific signs, sure, if we they're are not being erected. They're not paying for them because they're not putting these up right now. Why are we adding? We're asking them to put them up. I'm just wondering because no, we, no, no. We, listen, it's good. It's year, good we debate. Add another cost to local government. Sure, everything. I, I just, I just <clears> want to <throat> some point. I, and I and I and I listen. I, I fully understand and, and and hear what you're saying. I would say that that currently today, that they are erecting signs. This actually may save some cities. I'm not saying it's going to save all, and it may not save any. But because I don't know every city and, and just got an ordinance and how they got it, but it actually may end up saving them some money because if they are currently abiding by the law or even close to abiding by the law. They've erected a lot more signs than, than what this is going to mandate that they do. But so if they're doing it, why are we telling them to do these? All of them are not. Tell them to do these? All of them are not. Okay. And that's the problem because right. I think it's the gray area within the law. Okay. There's a task force that was put together where they actually went in and looked at this and studied it over the summer. And this is the language that they actually have come back with. But oh. but I, I, I hear you and it's I, not a big I respectfully. Me. Sure. I just, I just, Absolutely. Uh, these are local governments making the decisions on whether they want people to be able to ride in golf carts or not. No. And if they're making if they're making decisions that say yes, but let's pass that cost on to the state. No. That would be I the think, reverse way. I think I think that's <laughs> a bit be of a stretch. Us. When folks say, "Come on now, that, that that is a bit of a stretch," because we do have a responsibility when it comes to government. We supply the roads that come through if they're state roads, and we can't deny them that because they won't pay for a road. That's our road. We still pay it. They're still paying taxes. All I'm saying is this, is that at some point we've got to stop passing costs down to local government that we impose. Sure. Too many unfunded mandates. And, and all I'm saying, all. Mr. Williams, is is it, not true, is it not true, Mr. Chairman, that each municipality makes the local decision on whether they want golf carts or not? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Williams and Chairman. Chairman Ryan. That is true. Right now, currently, I mean, the state doesn't decide if you have a golf cart ordinance. It is voted on by your local cities and municipalities. Yeah. Representative Harrell? I believe the question was, ju was just answered. It's, it's my understanding that the signs would only be erected when a local jurisdiction makes a determination locally that they want to adopt a local ordinance to permit the golf carts, if you will, in their community. And it w at such point as they, they would never have to put up these signs until they made that voluntary choice locally to do so. And then at that point, they would erect the signs. And, and depending on the reasoning for making that decision, uh, they may or may not have funding to help them put the put the signs up so I, I don't I don't see this as any way mandating uh, an additional cost for signage on local government government absent their desire to permit this permit this use is it did it, do I understand the, the intent correct is that right okay thank you Rep thank you representative Harold on the one let's I'm through with it but I need to say this just give me one second let's let's go to representative Nimmer and then we'll come back to you <laughs> I had a question earlier. I 
You're pretty close. You're pretty close to knowing it there. Great job, Mr. Mr. Representative Nimmer. Representative Williams. Okay. Let's Are not forget that we asked to rename mm -hmm. bridges. And in our infinite wisdom, we now make the representative pay for the sign on a state road. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you can't even erect, you can't even name it Joe Blow Highway. I guess they waited until I got to the legislature to stop making you buy a tax. Signs have been in existence here for years, and it's the same thing. I mean, my goodness, what is the difference? That is a state bridge. That's a state road. We're doing, if, if, if we have the right to get into it, and we should help pay for it. They can, if we, it's a state right of way. I mean, it's, so what? The city wants golf carts. Fine. Get a golf community. Guess who gets a part of that sales tax revenue? We do. It's good business to do business with cities like that. I'm through. I'm saying, no, go until the next meeting. <laughs> this may be the last one after this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Representative Deffenball. I'm waving. Okay. Representative Epps. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Under, under the current procedures, uh, state routes, signage is responsibility of GDOT. On the local street, or roads, there would be responsibility of local government. So GDOT does have regulatory authority on signage on state routes. Well, yeah, in that instance, but just all nearly signs that would, would be probably under their purview anyway. Well, and, and, and Representative Williams, I, you, the, the part about the naming of the, the bridges and all, in all actuality, I'm the one to blame for that. When I became chairman, yeah, I, when I became chairman, I actually um, we talked about it, and at the time, you know, the, the the cost associated, you know, we're in tough times and we're cutting budgets, and you know, here was all this money that was coming out of GDOT's budget for signs, and I just felt like, to me, and this was my personal opinion at the time, if a bridge or a road was important enough for me to to dedicate in honor of someone. Then, then I would be willing to either one, myself pay for it, or either raise the money, or if somebody come and ask me, and it was something that was important enough to them, then the the two hundred dollars that it cost, well, I mean that depends on the signs, and and then it, and it goes up to five hundred, but to two hundred, but to also, I mean, how can we justify in our, these tough times, saying okay, the state's going to pay for something that it, that we're actually doing? I mean, that that was my my um my reasoning behind doing it and both at the time speaker richardson and then speaker ralston said that they thought it was a good idea as well so that's you can blame me for that and, and, speaker and, and speaker richardson and speaker ralston yeah you can blame all of us for that <laughs> hey recognize um person nimmer This would be the proper time. So, okay. Could we, for clarification, read the amendment again to make sure we've. Do you have that added? Okay. Eddie, Eddie, Representative Chairman Rogers, would you like to read your amendment to? Yes, after the order screens by line 17, all costs associated with such signs shall be funded totally by the governing authority. Okay, we have a motion on the bill, um, LC 3522894 as amended. Or let's see, I guess we'll vote on the amendment. Yes. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I don't think I spoke loud enough, so I would like to read the amendment again. Okay. All uh, costs associated with such signs shall be funded. <laughs> <laughs> Such signs shall be funded. Susie sells shells by the seashore. Mm -hmm. Shall be funded totally by the local governing authority. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm sorry I didn't say that louder. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> louder and faster this time. Representative Ballinger, did you help him out on that down there? Could you, could you pronounce it? <laughs> anyway, okay. I'm sure we got to vote on the amendment. Okay. So um, all those in favor of the amendment, the Reinders amendment, say aye. 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 All opposed? Eyes clearly have it. And you voted for it? <laughs> I just promise you wouldn't say another word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then. <laughs> it's a beautiful world, isn't it? Okay, so now we have LC 352894 as amended. All those in favor? Uh. All those opposed? Eyes clearly have it. The uh, committee passed the House Bill 384. Great job, Chairman Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. You can adjourn. Oh, meeting adjourned. <laughs>